Hello and a very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us on today's CNBC Africa special. On today's episode of Captains of Industry, we will be touching base on the music industry here in Rwanda as well as the East Africa. We will be joined by Ngabo Medhat Jobe, whose stage name is Medi. Now, he is one of the most successful artists here in Rwanda and he'll be sharing his early beginnings, the challenges in the sector, as well as how he managed to make it a sustainable career. Career. Medi, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, how did you find your stage name Medi? Because your real name is Ngabo Medaj Jovet. Yeah, first of all, I want to thank you for having me in the studio right now. And uh, so, uh, Medi, it's, it's a very kind of funny story because, like, um, I was trying to make a short uh, version of Medar. And uh, surprisingly, Medar and Medi has the same meaning. It's literally the same meaning. When I Googled it, like, uh, I think three years ago, people would keep, keep asking me, like, uh, what's the meaning of Medi, Medi, Medi? And Medi means um, brave. Mm. And Medar is the same. So Medar is in Germany. Uh, they use it in Germany. It's in German. It's a German uh, name. And Medi is uh, also, like, a Greek name. And so, surprisingly, it has the same meaning. Yeah. But it was, uh, when I did it, it was just to make uh, my name short. Really, it was just creating a stage name. As yeah, nothing. and uh, now it's actually caught and it's picked up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Could you also take us through your early beginnings? When did you start music? Where you grew up, and till today? Yeah, I started when I was. Um, I started in church, uh, Sunday school, and then uh, I um, started writing my own songs in uh, I think high school, and uh, from there I met a group of um, three young um, uh, students. We started singing at schools and we were going to different churches. And that's where we started. And then when we finished high school, we couldn't keep up with the whole group because everybody went their own way. And then that's when I uh, started my own thing. Mm. Yeah. And how long have you been singing for? How many songs do you have? Oh man, it's been a long time. I, hope, I think maybe, maybe 15 years. Yeah, it started when I was in high school, but I never really released any song until I finished high school. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I would say um, in 2008, 2009, that's where like, uh, I started playing uh, my songs on the radio. Mm. Yeah. And how many songs do you have now? So far, it's probably maybe maybe 20 songs. There's, well, there's a released song and there's an unreleased song. So I'd say maybe the one that are, uh, the, the released one would be maybe around 15. Or around 15. Are they all in an album or it's singles? Uh, there's there's some that are in an album and others are, are like on uh, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. They're mostly singles. You know, like nowadays, it's uh, everything is like uh, done electronically and uh, on the uh, uh, internet platforms. Mm. So uh, now we nowadays it's just more singles. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, as you shared, you started singing when you were young, started at church. What are some of those things that you'd say pivoted you to the person you are today? You know, who are the persons you used to look up to? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I think growing up in church, it kind of shaped uh, my whole uh, personality and character and, and uh, how I live with people. Because uh, I think you can be talented and there's also like a character that's kinda, that kind of plays a role in, uh, in your life and career. So I think it's a mixture of everything. So I would say um, living in church, um, uh, living with my parents, and I, we had a certain discipline we were supposed to follow. We had a certain routine of things we were supposed to do. Those are things that really, I think, uh, shaped uh, who I am today. Looking back, would you say that you had moments and you had times when you wanted to quit, you know, when you started? Yes, yes, of course, so many times. Mm -hmm. And what kept you going? Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I was uh, finishing high school. I, I did uh, math and physics in high school. I wanted to become a computer engineer. And but going that route, because my, my brother, uh, my, my older brother is in IT, and I, I felt like um, I wanted to become something just like I was following my brother's path, you know. And then I, I, somehow music wasn't really significant enough in people's life, and like like today. So I've always had like a, a plan B. I thought I was, you know what, I'll just follow my, my education and do, uh, be a computer engineer or stuff like that. But um, 
as we keep going, like I felt like music was coming in and out to a point where at some point I was, uh, I had hope. At some point I didn't have hope because what I was happening and uh, being uh, like going in a, being in a country like Rwanda that we came from the darkest place to here, it's probably one of the biggest challenges like uh, we had like uh, with the people's mentality and, uh, and our families, uh, friends. Nobody really was really encouraging the music culture. Yeah. yeah, and now looking today, what are some of the challenges in the music sector when you look at the whole value chain? What would you say are some of the things that are still holding back the music industry? Um, at the beginning, it was more of a, a languages uh, barrier because, like you know, uh, we want to grow bigger and bigger and. Uh, with our language, it was kind of hard to kind of go th uh, break through the markets, international markets. But now we had started like uh, uh, mixing Kenya Rwanda and English, Swahili. So now you can see the change like uh, in the music industry, we're having different fans from different worlds and different countries. So uh, now it's about really to make them, make the international crowd really feel our music you know so but it's not easy but with time it's something we can always work on yeah, yeah. and also looking at the whole um, you've touched on 25 years ago where we were and where we are today Rwanda is still pretty young compared to the other East African countries we yeah. still have a lot to do to play catch up and also when you look at our culture and since Rwanda is still very cultural you know we want to do things certain way we, we want to be different we want to stand out would you say that uh, the way we still do things today is a limiting factor or to an extent can we use this to boost us to reach greater heights yeah i think the culture is always going to be part of uh, of us and i think we should always use the culture to actually come out to actually uh, break through because somehow um Everybody has, uh, uh, like we all have to have a, like our, uh, our own way of doing things, our own style and everything. So somehow the culture plays also a big, a big role. To, uh, it's like this a special way of, um, of the random people, especially of a random musician to, you know, to sing, to perform. So I, I think culture is, um, you, you, can't, you can't go away from culture. Mm. Yeah. You've touched on also us having our own way of doing something and would you say that uh, we actually know, when we look at the education that we have, when you look at uh, the different uh, musicians here we have on the country, would you say that uh, we have the right lens to guide us towards the right di direction? When you look at the creativity beat, when you look at the distribution as well as the marketing value chains in the music industry, would you say that uh, we still have a long way to go? Um, when it comes to, the, to, to the distributing uh, the songs and, and uh, our, our craft, there's still a bit of a challenge because of um, most of the things are done electronically. They're, they're done like on um, smartphones and everything. So it's a bit of a challenge, but that that one we it's a it's a, it's a journey. You know, it, we can't just wake up in the morning and everything expect everything to be working perfect. So I think um, that the distribution part is also this the only challenge we have because like uh, everything is do is done through. Apple Music, uh, you know, Spotify, iTunes, and all that stuff. But uh, somehow we also find another way of playing the music um, elsewhere, like uh, on YouTube, you know, all these uh, streaming uh, sites. But some uh, we don't make as much as uh, the international artists, but uh, we're getting there somehow. We're getting that. So what should be done for Randa to be set, for Randa to grow, for Randa to own its own content? Yeah, I think it, it's a mentality we have to really start like uh, teaching our fans and uh, uh, the community because uh, it's really from them that we get all these, um, we can either ma be paid or actually lose money or, you know. So I guess uh, if we have a mentality to buy and to uh, promote the, the music, that would also uh, help us uh, boost uh, the the distribution. Now before we jump into the second half of the interview where we'll be talking about sustainability and making money in the music industry, tell us your story like when you started your first ever concert to now singing alongside Neo, how was that shift for you? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a really uh, I would say interesting and a very um, uh, opportunity for me to actually uh, 
grow as a musician because at the beginning um, uh, we had like a, an outdoor uh, space to, to have a concert. Now we have like a, something like Kigali Arena. I think it's really a big deal and it requires, uh, it, it challenges us as, uh, as, a, as musicians or promoters also to do something really big because it's like you have everything in one place now it's 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 like the ball is on our, is on our, is on our side so i think it's challenging but it's also like a, a big step i'd say that uh, we are making uh, in the music industry and for me really it, it kind of it's kind of preparing me to actually achieve greater things yeah and you've touched on uh, living in the us how would you say that move from rwanda to the us placed you on the rwandan market as well as on an international market how did it grow your brand yeah, I think uh, when I went to the state, I think that's when I learned to actually grow my my, my, my brand as, as you know, because you understand you. Not, it's it's only when you real you see other people and you see uh, other people's achievements that you start realizing, oh, this is what I need to work on. This is what I need. So I think it challenged it challenged me like in a positive way to actually work harder and harder. And and and, and it's also not easy because like uh, you're in a country where you're like you're a stranger you know but um it, it, it's a good way to also like uh, work on your craft and 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 learn to go far uh, far in your career mm. yeah. work on your craft learn to grow further in your career let's take a short break here on captains of industry but don't go anywhere because when we come back maybe will be sharing with us how we can make sustainable living from the music industry here in rwanda stay tuned Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Captains of Industry, where our guest today is Medi, one of Rwanda's leading artists. Now, Medi, before we went on the break, you shared with us your early childhood, how you entered into the music industry, the challenges, but now I want to understand the sustainability. We were talking theory, but now let's go into the numbers. How do you make money as a musician? Would you say that uh, actually being a musician is very profitable in this day and age? Yes, it is. It definitely is. Uh if you get to 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 make it to the point where people actually love you, and and, and I think that's a very it's the hard point because like uh, you can have talent, you really can dance, you can do anything, but uh, it's it's another thing for people to actually feel the vibe and really want to come to see you or play your songs and everything. Uh, there's many ways to do that. Uh, and uh, I would start at the beginning. It was more of just like uh, being paid for a concert, and it went from there to being paid for a advert or like publicity, and then it went. It took another step where you can actually sell your music online, and that's where everything now is really centered right now. If you if you have um, more views, you're getting paid more uh, on, uh, from YouTube. If you get more people to listen to your songs on Spotify, iTunes, the more you get uh, more, more money, I guess. So uh, now it's, it's completely different from what it was at the beginning. Yeah, and uh, you're the one, your song slowly has the, me the most views on YouTube. It has, I think, over 16 million. What's your red card today? Okay, I would say um, it's really hard, to be honest, to be in this in a, in a in, like in this position for a long time because you understand there's a crazy competition out there people kids are coming out of nowhere singing like birds you know so like uh, you really have to prove people that you are still able to uh, entertain them so I'd say like um, even though like slowly like the song uh, became like a big hit uh, in my career but I, I'm still at a point where I'm, uh, I still want to have those many views in like three, two months, you know. Because like um, I look at the, I, I look up to the to the artists that actually came before me that actually even bigger than me. So 
the actually the it's like the more you go the more thirsty you become you know the more uh you know like you really want to grab it like you know so I, i've never been to a point where i'm like okay i made it yeah and how much investment do you usually put in your music videos promotion marketing of your craft yeah um i would say to this point we are like at a po- uh, at a place where even though people think we're making a lot of money out there it's not a lot of money as people think because like uh we the, the money we get is the money we put out because like uh, you want to grow bigger so you invest almost um the same amount of money the same amount of money that you make so we are we're still struggling with that a little bit like uh, you see a video that could can cost you like about 6 7000 8000 and if you let's say for example you make videos for uh dollars every 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 video you make $7000 after 3 7 months you're going to have to uh put a little up your game yeah, exactly so like uh it's a very challenging uh the industry but uh you can always make it mm. so when you invest let's say that 7000 US dollars into a music video would you say that uh, you're seeing more or less the same amount in return or the return is twice as much You get the return but uh the return you get is uh is differently of how you put it. For example, you you make a video to put on uh, on, on like channels like your, your Spotify and everything. You might not get the same amount of money, but you might get shows here and there. So it's a very tricky way to calculate how much you're making because yeah. it comes in different forms yeah it comes in in different forms we are in a digital era everything is moving to digital yeah. would you say that uh, players in the industry here in Rwanda and also in East Africa are they really leveraging the digital opportunities to promote their materials yes some some some, uh, some artists are doing really good some artists are really on top of their game to be honest and some others are still struggling but uh in general you see like there's hope like literally people are, for example like um on, on on Instagram or Snapchat Twitter like so many people get on those website like every month you know like i, I could get like a, uh every two weeks uh, like a uh, 1000 followers every two weeks or something that shows you that really it's moving so fast so the more it's moving fast the more it's easy for us to to sell the product so i think we are going somewhere like maybe like in 5 uh, years or 3 years we're going to go we're going to be at a place where it's going to be much comfortable mm, the digital platforms are coming and it's also making easier for you people to sell their products yeah. but now do you think that people know the ownership bit do you think that people know the rules and regulations how to use these digital platforms do they know the intellectual property laws Um the ones that are, that are, that are making it to a point where they get like more subscribers and they get all those things they get to understand because there's a, a, a but I don't think a, more, a, a lot of musicians understand how it works because like for example YouTube YouTube now is the biggest platform right now and uh, it has they have like the regulations and uh, rules and policies and everything and they offer it to people to actually learn uh but people they just uh getting two views and uh, getting to put their stuff out there that they don't really learn all the stuff. That's why you're going to see like people had used to have like a big channels like with the 200 subscribers, 200,000 and they end up losing the channel because they don't really know the policies and everything. So it's a very um uh, it's it's a point you really really to pay need to pay attention to actually make yeah. make it grow. And what do you think needs to be done because we've seen like hey in Rwanda the government is through RDB they're putting in more efforts creating more awareness on the intellectual property law but what needs to be done for people to be more open and understand Yeah I think maybe if we have like a uh, forums or like a uh, conferences or something that would help a lot because like it's um, uh, it's hard to reach to 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 transfer the message um on 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 phones or anything or on YouTube some people th- uh they understand the reality of it when they actually uh there in place talking about it like as musicians and uh, promoters and uh, all these uh uh companies that are behind it there's like so many um uh copyright companies out there people have no idea they exist and you put uh you might put my product outside or like my picture on YouTube and you get hit like they they call them strikes on copyright strike 
and the people might think, oh, why would you do that? They come to me thinking I'm the one who actually did it, but it's because yeah. the, those the, 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 the comp copyright company that like uh, we are signed under, but they don't know. So those are things really we could learn if we have like a, a, a organization and a, a way to plan for like maybe a conference or something. Like yeah, that. and also for people to come and really understand. Yes. Yeah. So with the musician really do their beats, really do their best. But now when you look at the audience here in Rwanda, East Africa, do you think that uh, the different brands, the companies, and people here really give the music industry much value, the value that it's needed? Yeah. Um, that's hard, but because sometimes it looks like they do, sometimes it looks like they don't. But it's uh, I think it's all up to also companies that are behind. For example, the promoters, uh, the companies that are like uh, uh, helping the the artist. Um, it, it it's uh, the people they love the music. You can tell. Like if you can have a show like that in uh, Kigali Arena, people come and fill it up. Like that shows you really they love music but uh, the question is like are we really doing our best uh, on our side as a uh, musician or promoters to make it make make the game exciting mm. so that's the only challenge and um, when it comes to like um, people that are putting investing money into it uh, some people don't understand the value of the the youth yet uh, all those things so th th there has to be like a certain type of uh, awareness uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, the concerts or like um, selling music and everything to actually uh, help us uh, go further. Yeah, awareness as well as also the value of the youth. And we see that many people are actually passionate, yeah. but when we look at the society, the norms set by the society, it's uh, music is a plan B. Go to school, graduate, go to university, you know, do that when you're free, but it's still not considered as a career as of yet, yeah. you know. So what are some of the things that need to be done for that to change? And would you advise someone to take it up as a career? Yeah, I, I, for example, I'll give you an example that really shocked me, that really um, touched my heart. Like it was a, the Nyundo, Nyundo idea, the School of uh, Music. That was one of the greatest ideas I've ever seen in the music industry in Rwanda. Because like now, you come for a concert, the, the kids, they're really young, can play everything. They come, you just rehearse for like a week, they're ready to go. But you can tell that uh, they're still struggling with, uh, with their careers, you know what I mean? Because they're, they're so good, they love what they're doing, but they don't have, um, the income yet is not really there yet for them to actually be motivated. So. Um, I don't want I don't want it to be to a, to a point where they're looking for another job when they went to school for music, you know. So I think we need to give it value and help them as much as we can because music is uh, is part of the youth. Music is part of the happiness. Music is part of life. Yeah. So if we understand that, we we'll really have to put attention on that and help all these kids. Yeah, and when you say we need to put in value, we need to help them grow, who is we? When you look at the private sector, when you look at the government, when you look at the artists themselves, yes, the industry is still small, but now who is that I think player? Mostly private sectors and also like uh, the, the most of the companies that are really into music uh, uh, promotion. For example, like um, we know all the companies that are a part of concerts here, you know? And um, if we just not focus, because some, some, some companies really focus on the, how much money they make and everything. But I think at this point, we need to first focus on the product that uh, these kids are giving and then really give it value. And uh, it's up to them to actually, if they put money into this thing, it's going to be professional. We're going to have biggest concert ever in East Africa. Yeah. In fact, like, uh, I can tell you, I've been to Tanzania, I've been to Kenya and everywhere, and Rwanda is uh, one of the uh, uh, places like, that charge people that much money and people should still show up. Mm. You know, you see all these uh, people that do, they, when they it sell comes out. When for the concert. Yeah, they sell out arenas over there, they sell out stadiums. But I'm telling you, in Rwanda, people put value on it, like the, the population. Mm. They understand the value. They come, if they can pay like uh, 50,000, 25,000, they still, uh, uh, pack, pack the, the Kigali Arena, you can understand that the people understand the value. Now the question is the other companies really into mm, it. Yeah, there is demand, but now do we have enough supply? Exactly. You know, and what needs to be done for that sector to grow? 
it, it, it's 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 awareness and and yeah. they really we really need to sit down and, and make maybe make them understand because like um, I understand that it's all about business anyway mm -hmm. but uh, business is better when you have really a little bit of a, a value and emotion on in, in people's life you know because like uh, uh, these kids that really play this music the musicians are here it's like uh, they're, they're, they're doing their craft, to be honest. They're doing best, uh, best songs, best everything. Yeah. But now the question is like, uh, uh, are the companies really ready to sponsor? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the companies, are they really ready to sponsor? And we've been seeing international music labels coming to Africa to get talent. Like Sony, they, they are in Uganda. And now, do you think that people here are actually very keen waiting for that opportunity to come for international brands to come into the country and get them? You know, or should we as a country just embrace our own and try to... I think we, we first need to really embrace our own thing before actually anybody from outside can help or be part of it and, and i'll tell you this uh, is it's, it's the, the only reason why i personally do concert like outside rwanda is because the power the rwandan uh, fan base give me you know it's because like for example if i have a show here in, in the stadium and the stadium is packed people in belgium in uh, in america in ghana they would like to know who's this guy so it's only by us and for us you know that's what i think yeah and you as i said before in the interview you are one of the fewest random artists to actually make it that big if a young person is watching you right now and they are wondering what did medi do differently what is medi's secret ingredient what would you tell him uh, i would say first of all is to have the the passion and the love for this uh this thing that what we're doing the music there's so many things that's gonna that are gonna happen ups and downs for sure People are gonna come at you and in different ways, your own friends, your own family. I think just focus on the love you have for the for the for the music and be humble, you know, keep learning new things every day. Don't think you're somewhere at a place where you, you can't talk to anybody, you can't listen to anybody. But just stay humble, uh, stay thirsty. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Medi. Thank you so much for having me. This conversation with Midi on today's episode of Captains of Industry brings us to an end. As always, share your thoughts, questions and suggestions on Twitter. You can tag us at CNBC Africa. I was your host, Naringwa Fiona Muthoni. Cheers for now.